you guys. Happy Sunday. Yeah. It's Sunday. We're kind of sleepy. Although, yeah. we didn't go out late last night. I didn't even think I drank last night. You did. Yeah. You had some leftover from... From the other day. From still the other day. There. It was still sitting there, and you're like, hey, but it's still good. We'll put ice yeah, in it. Yeah, just put ice in it and start drinking. <laughs> just perfectly preserved. Right so yeah, we, saw that, uh, we saw this new movie. What's it called? Midnight... Nightmare, Nightmare Alley. Alley. Nightmare, Nightmare Alley. Nightmare Alley. That's what it is. And it's a movie. I, it looked like it was going to be some kind of supernatural horror movie or, or, or something. It's neither. It, but it's good. It's really good. Uh, it's got... Um, it, it's about carnies. And the weird yeah. shit, the weird grifts and shit that they were doing, and it fucking turned into some fucking pretty dark, pretty dark stuff. And it's from a book, and there's an older movies that, that, that this comes from. But Guillermo del Toro, he he, this is his interpretation of it. It's fucking good. It's real good. Even the the sets, it's, it's happening back in the forties, the thirties and the forties, and it trans you transports you back there. It looks it looks authentic. Some of these old fucking buildings. I don't know where was that. Chicago, uh, Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, New York. The, yeah. yeah, some of it was filmed in Buffalo. Some of it was filmed in uh, Canada, but a lot yeah. of it was filmed in Buffalo. Real high end Art Deco fucking buildings and offices and good sets and stuff taking place in fucking carnivals with weird acts going on and a bunch of grifters, grifters and criminals and hobos and. You expect fucking Pan's Ram to show up, start raping men. <laughs> it's all kinds of stuff happens in it. It's good. I enjoyed it. I mean, I yeah, I did too. I have to say, um, it's not going to be for everybody, but I legit loved this movie. I mean, I think really, I've seen like a lot of critics really seem to be digging it, and some were like, well, it's a little bit too long. It's long. It's two and a half hours. But it had but to be- it didn't really, I mean, on, honestly, I was just like captivated the whole time. It was such an interesting story. Told, told this dude's um, story about why he joined the carnival. He killed somebody. They don't really get into it, but you know that he did. Or you see him hiding the body, and then he joins the carnival. And then once he's in the carnival, starts a new life and learns all these skills and becomes a mentalist. But he steals those skills from another dude. And it's like, he's like a Sith Lord. And all of a sudden, he's kind of... B- Believing his shit, he, they were warned about. You know, they warned him about it. it says, you know, the, the old mentalist was like, "You might start believing your own shit and get you get yourself into big trouble." And it happens. He's getting to where he could just almost like read people's minds, and you start buying into it that maybe this is some kind of psychic ability. But then he comes back, no, 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 and he explains how he did it. But he was so good at it. You go, well, it may as well be supernatural. So it, it kind of fueled his fucking head and his ego getting bigger and bigger. And, and he started getting greedy. Started too. getting greedy. He gets in with fucking rich dudes, goes up through lawyers. And the next thing you know, these fucking billionaire fucking Rockefeller type dudes who fucking need him to contact the dead and shit. And then it turns out that these dudes are no good, man. They got their own fucking private security. Yeah, and pretty much own... every character yeah. is, is terrible right. in their own ways. <laughs> Which it all kinds of fucking goes back to what I've been telling you people over the fucking years. The more power and fucking wealth a dude accrues, the more suspect he is. There's a reason why he got that way. And it gets into that, even though it's kind of a side... St- they're just... He had a problem. He's basically almost like a serial killer in a way. Or it infers that maybe he is one. It's, it's difficult to say um you just have to see the movie but he's threatening him you know fucking you do this and that fucking you're gonna see what i do to you you know this is just the fucking rich dude with his he's got a bodyguard he i guess i recognize him from another movie he's just he like was on mindhunter mindhunter yeah i mean That's he's right. been he's in a ton mindhunter. he's been in a ton of shit but he was in a mindhunter he was yeah on he's kind of like a private detective but he's fucking looks like something from the mafia kind of like a mixture of the both and he'll kill you with a fucking heartbeat his loyalties. Or he he loves that old dude because because what he did for him so he'll do anything for him, including fucking commit murder, and this guy's fucking just loaded, and um, this mentalist just gets himself deeper and deeper falls in with this uh, psychologist and it turns out she's as bad as he is she she's or maybe worse or worse <laughs> you just gotta make a, she's a predator too she's doing the same thing he's doing it's just that he's She's using the um, psychotherapy to do it, but it's the same thing. Bilking these motherfuckers out of money. It, it's a good flick, real good. 
real good. Yeah, I mean, she's like I said, she's using mind it's... powers on a motherfucker like she's a damn Jedi. Or like she's a fucking Sith Lord and crap. It, but she's just doing it and using a different style. And it's all grounded in reality. It's not. Yeah, because I kind of feel like I think. Maybe. I, I kind of feel like maybe people would be surprised that Guillermo del Toro would make a movie like this because his whole thing, he likes to do like supernatural or more like fantasy type stuff. Um, I think this is the first movie that he's done that has no supernatural elements whatsoever. Um, but you can actually see why he would want to do a movie like this. It's not what he would usually do, but I really think he brings something to this. Now, yeah, so there was this was actually based on a novel which came out in 1946 by William Lindsay Gresham. And then they made um, a version of it in 1947 with um, Tyron Power. Now, interestingly, I'm not gonna spoil the end or because this movie's like super new, so I don't really wanna like spoil the end and I really do. I mean, as I said, it's not gonna be for everybody, but I loved it. I, I thought it was like so, so good. Um, but interestingly, the 1947 version has a little bit of a more hopeful ending this one uh, has the same ending as the book, which yeah. is uh, pretty fucking bleak, I'm gonna say. Uh, this is essentially, what it is, it's like a road to ruin type story. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, but you're basically following Stan, who's like the main character, Stan Carlisle, I think his name is. Um, and how he, you're following him throughout like several years of his life how he gets into these situations, how he gets in with the carnival and then he gets all these powers and then like he's this yeah. big success. But the thing, it's almost kind of like a tragic downfall type story because you know, as you're watching him, he's not a good person. And I mean, as the movie goes on, you kind of like him, but he's you kind of like him, but he's yeah. almost like an anti-hero. But then as yeah. the movie goes on, you're like, Oh wow. He's like, he reveals himself to be like a shittier and shittier person. Yeah. Like the whole time. It's it's like, it's it, it, the, it, the story is about power and karma. You can have power, but in a way you kind of have to pay for it and everything kind of comes back when, it, which it, which is, and it's, it's basically the same kind of laws about witchcraft. You can cast a spell, but it costs you. Like what happened to old Ed Harley? You know, <laughs> using these mentalist ability, the mentalist powers and grifts on people, it comes back if you do it, if you start abusing it too hard. And it kind of, and it kind of drawn parallels between grifting, using carny grifts, and use and the kind of grifts that a psychotherapist or scientist or a doctor or any kind of professional. You can scamify or griftify anything. And that's really what the carny lifestyle is about. And they're just showing it that it extends outside of carnivals into the fucking wider world. It's showing a world of corruption, how anything can be used as a weapon. But there's karma. You, 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 you pay for it eventually, especially if you use it too much. That's what I picked up from it. Well, and as I said, too, it's kind of based around your main character who I think like Bradley Cooper was a good choice for this because you know he's a good looking dude and he's kind of a charming dude and you don't want to believe that he's yeah. as terrible a person as he is yeah, because of how he looks and the st setting and his costumes you kind of see him as Indiana Jones but he's not but he reminds you a lot of fucking fucking uh, of Indiana Jones to me yeah he does have that kind of vibe to him yeah, yeah. it's, it's kind of like I was looking at Looking at uh, fucking old, what's his name? Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford, I've never really seen him play, play a bad guy. But as, as it starts to unfold, you see, they give him these abilities. They tell him, but this is, the, the dude warns him. Says that, you know, there's limits to this. Eventually you'll start, if you start believing your own bullshit, it's going to lead you down a bad path. And that's that's really what the story is about. He's yeah, I mean, everybody bullshit. like try was warning him. They warned him about what he's doing. But as I said, his you know his fatal flaws were one greed. Yeah. Uh, because he got in like and he was making more and more money because of this scam that he was running with the psychoanalyst. Yeah. And also his overconfidence in his own abilities. He thought that he could just do anything. He I was he good was, at it. Yeah, he, was. he started to believe it in a certain sense. But he really, yeah, he really did kind of start to start to believe in his own invulnerability. His own infallibility, and he was right about a lot of shit. But, but then he come at it seems supernatural. But then he'd come back and he'd explain how he thought that. But he was pretty accurate. Yeah, it makes you wonder. Like when so you start to it kind of blurred the lines. Well, it may as well be supernatural. So next thing you know, he's believing his own bullshit. He's believing in his own magic. 
very much like fucking um, L. Ron Hubbard. And those yeah. cult leaders start doing they just start believing their own bullshit. They start to think they're infallible, that they're supernatural in some weird way, or that it may as well be supernatural. It's not. But it comes back on them kind of like something supernatural eventually anyway. It has to do with geeking, and I don't want to spoil it. But they, they, they show yeah, how to like, make a geek. And you, That scene between yeah. him and Willem Dafoe is so good. I mean, yeah. Willem Dafoe is great in this. He's not in it a lot. He's yeah. kind of like the guy that runs the ten in one that he first yeah. goes to the carnival, and um, he's such a sleaze. Yeah, he's just like he's so fucking good at this. And make, that conversation where he tells him about like how they how they get geeks for yeah. the you for make, the old time carnies. Yeah, making a geek is about exploiting the weakness of fucking a person who's already got so kind of like a drug and alcohol pro- problem. How you can take a person like that and fucking magnify it and make money off of it, uh, and which is fucking highly, highly fucking immoral. But these dudes are fucking bad. They're like fucking sorcerers. That's what I mean. Way. Pretty much everybody... Now, yeah. I'm not going to say everybody, like because... Um, not Rudy, all of them were bad. Rooney Mara's character, not, Molly, yeah. um, she's a good person. And, you know, some of the other carnies, yeah. uh, you know, were good people. Yeah. But the dude running the carnival... Um, you know, Bradley Cooper's character, yeah. Kate Blanchett's character, the femme fatale. Yeah. Uh, these were all terrible, terrible people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But very, very entertaining to watch them. It's a very yeah. seedy. Yeah. But I liked that about it. So it's like the first half of it, like I said, it's long. It's long. It's like two and a half hours. Like the first half of it or the first third of it takes place at the carnival in 1939. Um, and I really dug that because, I mean, we've done a show about, like, old sideshows and stuff like that. I love that kind of stuff. I love yeah. the aesthetic of it. I just love all those old carnivals, like, those, f- like, fucking freak shows and yeah. pickled punks in the jars and shit yeah. like that. So that's, like, the first third. And then it goes to, like, it jumps ahead two years to where, um, you know, Bradley Cooper's character Stan and Molly have kind of, like, They've kind of gone up in the world. They have this really good mentalist act, and you know everybody comes to see. Them. So they have like a lot of rich people coming to see them. So they're making money, and then it's kind of like goes into, as I said, his his overweening ambition. Yeah. Uh, and he gets in with Kate Blanchett's character, whose name is Lilith, by the way. Oh. They didn't really say like I think I don't even think they call her by because she's a, she was a yeah, psychoanalyst. But I, it's said on the door. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I don't think he ever mentioned her name. Yeah. I mean, she had the, you know, they. her name yeah. was Dr. whatever her last name was, yeah. but her first name was Will Lilith. she puts on the fucking perfect 40s dame fucking show. Yeah, with, she was fucking with great. With her legs this. and her fucking mannerisms and her outfits. Just like a, she looked like a 40s supermodel. She was fucking looking, she, but it's all just part of her special secret abilities. I mean, they're, they're like fucking Jedi and Sith. There's like light side, <laughs> there's light side fucking carny abilities or light side scams and dark side scams. That's, and it's, it's that kind of shit. It's like bad, it's like white witches and fucking sorcery. That's exactly what kind of what it, what it's talking about, I believe. Um, there was, there's a, there's a fucking, not a, what do you call it? There's some parallels there between what they're doing and magic or sorcery. Yeah, I mean, you pick that. You pick that. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Okay. I, I, it wasn't my imagination. I don't believe. Yeah, Sheila Ann says uh, Houdini used to do a mentalist act with Bess early in his career. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, I think we did a show about Houdini a long time ago. Now that I'm thinking about it, we should maybe revisit that because yeah. I love all that kind of stuff and all that spiritualist kind of stuff. Um, yeah, some people are pointing out because you said Harrison Ford had never played a bad guy. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, some people have Oscar uh, Perez says What Lies Beneath. Yeah, he was a bad guy. I didn't that. see that one. Uh, that's actually pretty good. Is it good? Um, in the conversation, he was a bad guy in that. Never so saw Mango. That one. Yeah, so he so he has right. been a bad guy in some things. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like watching Harrison Ford. If, if I felt like I was watching Harrison Ford. Yeah. You know, it's just just you know, sorry, you don't seem to agree with me, but. No, I mean, I, no, I know what you're saying. I just like it, it was, he didn't really give me that vibe, but I see what you're talking about. Gave that's, me very much all. like a Harrison Ford doing Indiana Jones as a mentalist. It, it just it just felt like that to me. But like I said, I think that that's why he was a good choice for this yeah. because you don't see him as a threat. You don't. Well, you don't see him. You don't want him to be a bad yeah, guy right. because he seems. Yeah. You know, he's a good looking dude and he's like charming. Yeah. And. At first, like, when he goes to the carnival, like, he's doing helpful shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's helping them out, and he, you know, when he first meets Molly, 
you know, he, he like, uh, makes her act better, you know, because she's, like, an electric girl, you know, yeah. with, like, they used to have at the old Carnival sideshows. And, uh, you know, he builds her an electric chair, and, like, he does, like, ups her game, you know what I mean? And so he seems like a good, like, you know he's not a good dude, because the very first scene of the movie... He's burying somebody. ...is him, like, yeah. putting a dead body in yeah. the floor and, like, burning a house down. So, yeah. but you don't know what the context of that right. is, because you're like, well, it's probably not good. Like, for sure he killed somebody, it looks like. It's deniable, though. It might but have been, you don't know... You don't know what the deal was. Right. You don't know what the deal was with that. Um, then, you, as, you find out later on. So you don't want to see him as a bad guy. Yeah, but, as, as things go on, fucking... He's good, and but some bad things happen around him, and you're like, wait a minute, hold on. Did he do that? You don't know. But then as it kind of unfolds, you're like, oh, no. Yeah, he did do that. Like I said, that's kind of yeah, like, like the more the that. movie goes on, I'm like, oh, my God, he's yeah. just like the... <laughs> He yeah. just gets shittier and shittier. Kind of, <laughs> he's grifting you. He, 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 he's scamming you. The That's viewer. what I mean. That's why yeah. he was like a good... And honestly, yeah. when they made the 1947 version, they did the, a similar kind of mind game because they had Tyrone Power, who was this very, very handsome, charming yeah. actor. So they want... I mean, yeah, it, you're kind of like running the same grift on the audience because yeah. it's like you don't want to believe this good-looking, charming dude is... A sociopath, yeah. Who's uh, all, essentially, just only out for himself, right? Yeah, and but you know, and then as it goes on, you're just kind of like, oh man, this dude sucks. It's yeah. like, oh my god, he's terrible. But um, yeah, well, like I said, a lot of people in this are terrible. Uh, you know, Willem Dafoe's character, he's a, he's a terrible person. Like I said, most of the carnies are are nice, seem nice enough. Well, yeah, you don't know a lot about. But you don't know a lot about them because yeah. they're mostly like. But I mean, I well, as, I assume that a lot of them are bad, except the electric girl. Well, the yeah, she seemed like kind of an innocent. I mean, she wasn't that and innocent. And the strong man. And the Perlman. strong man, yeah, Ron Perlman. Yeah. Um, you know, he was very protective of her. Yeah. And, and well, the little but, midget. Yeah. With him, he seemed, he seemed and, to be okay. Well, and it seemed to me, too, that um, Madame Zena, you yeah. know, Tony Collette's character, and her husband, who were yeah. the ones where who Bradley Cooper, like, learned all the yeah. mentalist stuff from, they seemed like pretty nice people. Yeah. Like, as carnies go. <laughs> she was using him to get ahead, and when he was getting too old, he was getting she was getting ready to discard him for the younger one. She was a predator, too. Although, it was I, well, it was, but I don't know. I'm kind of going back to... I think to, it was an open relationship, though. Well, that, well that's what I'm two. saying, because I think, I think in the book, um, there wasn't any whiff of that. Like, she right. wasn't, like, a bad person, okay. necessarily. I don't think. Like, at least from what I could determine from the, from the plot synopsis, because I haven't read the book. But, yeah, she didn't seem like a bad person, necessarily. The way, the way I interpreted it is that she was going to replace the old, the, the old guy with him. That's how I yeah, and which well he was, she he was used up anyway. Well, he couldn't help her anymore yeah, because he was, he was a drunk. He was a drunk, and he was. She on his still way loved out. him though. Yeah, he was on his way out, so she had to make a living. Yeah, but yeah, so yeah, he was like supposed to help her out with and her with her it. mentalist acting. He couldn't do it anymore because he kept yeah. like falling asleep on a job, falling drunk. asleep on the job and stuff. Because yeah. he was just like drinking all the time. But yeah. they showed they showed him as a sympathetic character though. Like yeah. he wasn't a bad person, and well, she wasn't. Uh, we she don't know. well, no, we don't know that either. Because I'm just saying he in, warned him about the power of that magic, so he did something bad. It's just you don't know about. It, remember. Yeah, well, he, he says, just said, just don't start believing your own bullshit. Yeah, which might have implied that maybe he start, he, he did, did that at some he, point he did, in the past, yeah. and it didn't go well. It didn't go well, right. Because um, why was he a drunk? It yeah. might, might have been some kind of regret or something that he had done because of that mentalist grift, the power that mentalism could get you. So that's how I interpreted that, is that he had a downfall. Because he, yeah. he believed his own shit. But he but he learned and he was trying to do a good thing by warning yeah. Stan and Stan Not didn't listen yeah. because Stan thought he knew better. Right. Fucking Stan. But uh, yeah, so, so like I said, that's kind of like the whole thing. It's this cyclical, um, tragic story, yeah. like a tragic downfall type of story. Yeah. And it is very bleak and it's very seedy. Yeah. Um, but I kind of love that. And honestly, you know how people, like, sometimes they say, oh, the, you know, why don't they make movies like like that anymore? Um, this is a movie that's the kind of movie that they don't really make much anymore. Because yeah. this movie, I don't know how much it costs to make, but it was I'm sure it was a lot because it it's good. fucking gorgeous. Yeah. Same cinematographer as uh, Shape of Water. So, you know, he's it's his same cinematographer that he's worked with before, uh, who's Dutch, I think. But, um, but it looks gorgeous. It's, you know, a, an actor's ensemble. It's just, like, talent out the wazoo. And this is an R-rated, 
adult you know not adult film like a porno film but an adult it, it's geared toward an older audience yeah. it's not superheroes it's not an action movie it's a drama and it's like a slow burn type they, they and it's real bleak and depressing and shit like that but it's like and i kind of feel like they released it the same fucking weekend as the new spider-man movie so you know it was yeah. going to get its ass kicked i wouldn't call it bleak, bleak and depressing the end is kind of like whoa yeah. yeah, but it's it, the movie. Yeah, because that that last scene, yeah. I think we both were just like, oh Whoa. no, <laughs> oh no, because we saw where it was yeah. going. <laughs> I was I was going along with it the whole time. I, you know, I was kind of riveted. I was like, okay, what's going to happen next? It was, it was interesting. So, yeah, it really. I I did yeah. not find it. It never bored me. No. It never. It's long, but it didn't really. I was just like enthralled like yeah. the whole time. I thought yeah, it was good. fascinating. It, it, it's it's real good. Um, and it's kind of like a kind of like a noir, kind of like a detective movie, and an old gangster movie, and almost like a movie about witches and supernatural and carnies and mentalist powers. Like I said, stuff. I love shit about. It's all kind of coming in together, in one thing, and basically. Most of the main characters are either some kind of fucking psychopath or a sociopath, and they range from being fucking dirt poor, like bums, up to billionaires, and they're all about the same. Yeah. In terms of being I will say, too, that one thing that kind of, I don't know, it didn't shock me, but I wasn't expecting it, is that in kind of the third act, when shit starts going sideways, like with his grifts and everything, um, there's some pretty intense violence yeah that i wasn't really expecting i was like oh there's the guillermo del toro i know yeah. and love you know what i mean where yeah some of the violence in it is like pretty pretty gross and but that's you know so i i guess that just kind of surprised me because up until then yeah it hadn't really you hadn't really seen much of that but i mean i don't know i just i really really liked this a lot and i'd be shocked if uh if i saw this, this might I, be this might be my favorite movie I've seen this year. It, it's yeah, it's I don't know. I think I like Bond a little bit better, but it's it's uh, it's up there. This is a serious movie, real good, real fun. I recommend it. I, I would almost say it's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece of what it is. Um, of this type of movie, and I've never really seen one like this. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a neo noir. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It's just it has. I guess like the original one was a lot more gritty or whatever. This one is very lush, yeah. but it's also, I mean, just the look of it because it's, you know, Guillermo del Toro and that's kind of his thing. But it's also like, like I said, it's really seedy and it has like a really seedy kind of vibe to it. Yeah. Well, it's kind of rooted in reality. Yeah. Nothing happens out of character. Like the violence isn't just out of nowhere. There's reasons for it. Yeah. And it's all like light stuff that would likely happen. Some of the stuff I knew, I was like, oh, this is, I know how this is going to go. Yeah. This can only go one way. And that's how it goes. That they should have seen that shit ha coming. Well, like oh, I said, like that's, that, that's the tragedy of the right. film is that because of his, because he thinks he's to like too much of himself, you can see how he's how going to go. downfall and he, before right. he sees it. Yeah. And so it almost like surprises him. He's like, oh shit. Right. Shit went bad. Even though everybody tried to warn him, everybody. But like I said, that was his tragic flaw. Right. So that's kind of like. And like every time somebody does something that's fucked up, it makes sense that they did it that way. That's, yeah, the that, characters in this are all, all make sense. Are very well drawn. I thought. Yeah. yeah um, nobody does anything out of character. You would go, yeah. Well, if I was in that position, that's that's I would probably have done that. You know, because so there isn't any characters that act stupidly or. Characters that fucking well yeah let's put it this way there aren't any characters that act in ways contrary to what seems to be the right thing to do at the time, aside from dudes getting greedy or what their character dictates. Right, yeah, dude just keeps getting greedy just because he fooled a judge. Now he's gonna fool. He keeps going up the goddamn ranks. And next thing you know, he's basically dealing with William Randolph Hearst or <laughs> fucking Rockefeller. You're like yeah, I'm gonna bring back the dead for you, you know. And I'm like, dude, come on. Well, and everybody was telling him that, like, let's You're gonna can we not? Yeah, and, and <laughs> That's not going to work out the yeah, way he think. Yeah, he work out how he's going to make this <laughs> illusion of bringing back the dead so he can get a couple more hundred thousand dollars when he's already gotten a fortune out of the dude. All you got to do is just say, I can't do it. I don't have, it's not within my abilities. But see, he can't do but that. he couldn't because, say. Because his char like, that's not what his character is. Yeah. His character is he thinks he can I do I would have told him, okay, man, that's it. That's all I can do. And I'm like, you've already got about a million and a half dollars out of you. You know, yeah. but I can't you know that's good in enough. 1941 gotta, money. yeah I gotta go 
you know, <laughs> fucking, but oh, you know what? For an extra two hundred thousand, yeah, I can bring her back. Yeah, totally. Like, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring her back. From and the I'd day. be like, oh, this is gonna go so badly. <laughs> it's gonna go so badly. Yeah, yeah. and it does. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, that's yeah. a, that's his whole character. Like right. he just couldn't. Uh, thank you. No need for me too. Saw the new Spidey. So good. I said that's the Everybody thing. Everybody says it's good. Yeah. I'll pro- yeah. We'll probably go okay, see, we'll it. see it. I mean, I don't really care about seeing it one way or the other. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, I'm not there. A lot of them are good, but I'm not really into the superhero movies. So the trailer for Morpheus just looks good. Morbius. Morbius. Yeah. That's, that actually does look it good. It looks yeah. good. Yeah. I like the ones about the villains, like the yeah. or he, he's not really. A I don't villain, think he's I a villain. I think he's kind of like kind of like the Punisher, where he's I think it's kind of like both, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Or so Venom. he's not he's not really a kind of like Venom. Yeah, I think it's more like a Venom type of yeah. thing, where he's kind of like, kind of like conflicted, maybe. like good and bad at the same time. Much. He's a vampire. Basically. I don't know. Yeah, he's kind of like a vampire. That does look good, and actually, the new Matrix looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, it's it kind of like like I said, it kind of bums me out. I'm not really sure what they were aiming for releasing Nightmare Alley the same week as Spider-Man because like I said you know it was going to get crushed but I don't know I was reading something else too that said oh well sometimes studios will do that because you know you're going to get the younger demographic shit like that going to see Spider-Man whereas Nightmare Alley is geared more toward an older audience so they're trying to you know diversify uh, the audiences that are going to come out that week or you know maybe your kids want to go see Spider-Man and you don't want to see it and you know yeah. what, whatever but I mean, I you know what? I'd actually be shocked if this didn't get nominated for some Oscars because it's already been nominated for a bunch of like Critics' Choice Awards and stuff yeah. like that. All um, I liked about it is that it's kind of like a period piece. It it is like a movie from an earlier age, but it fucking just looks great. There's no nothing modern in it at all. Nothing. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's that? really well. All, all yeah. the, the production design in this is fucking yeah. gorgeous. Right. There's no modern messaging. There's no product placement. They're just. It is like they're telling a classic tale. Yeah, now I'm actually now I want to read the book. Mm. To be honest with you, I'll read the book and I want to see the because I was gonna actually watch the original too, but I didn't have time like before we did this today because you know we went yesterday. Uh, we went to the three forty five show, so it let out at probably like seven o'clock, and we went to see it at the Altamont Mall, and it's the weekend before Christmas, right? Uh, so we couldn't find a place to park. We couldn't even get in the food court in the mall. It was fucking packed. The mall was fucking packed. The entire parking lot was full. Every parking lot was full. Yep. You were like driving around, like looking for a space, like by the fucking, yep. and then we were like, fuck it. We're just going to go. So we went, we had to drive like a couple miles away and went to Koi Wan, like the buffet and then drove all the way back to see the movie. There weren't that many people in the theater. But when we came out, there was like a fuck ton of people. So I guess like there was all those people were seeing Spider Man probably. I want to see. I think it's Black Adder. That's supposed to be coming out. Black Adam. Black Adam. That's this. Black yeah, Adder. Black Adder, Black Adder was that British. <laughs> yeah. That was that British yeah. comedy TV show. It has with something. Rowan Atkinson. I think that might have something to do with Shazam. I don't know if that's part of the Shazam it is. universe. It is. Yeah. Um, is that Shazam two or is it going to be just in the same universe? I wasn't sure. Like I saw the trailer for it and I was just kind of like, well, is this like an offshoot or yeah. cause I thought they were doing Shazam two, like literally. So maybe black Adam is like a offshoot, but like in the same universe, yeah. like they're trying to do like a crossover. I'm not really sure. That's got Dwayne Johnson. That's good. Dwayne Johnson's going to yeah. play, play, play bad black Adam. That's going to be, that's going to be good. And he, I think he produced uh, Shazam the first one or or partly produced it i don't really know but i remember that like day opening day or day two uh because you know i got i got the rock on instagram and uh he posted he goes oh man i'm glad you guys like the movie the fuck is, the numbers are looking great we're gonna go ahead and do a second one it's all ready we're gonna do another i'll do another one so he was already putting the money up for another one and i don't i guess that's black adam yeah you know and i guess shazam's gonna be in it and some people might laugh at me. I fucking loved. I liked Shazam better than fucking the MCU. I didn't really. I don't really like the Marvel ones too much. I think they're full of themselves and more like a ride at Disneyland where it's just all style, no real substance. It's just too many goddamn characters, and I don't really care about them. They're they're not even really fun to watch. Um, now I like the fucking Marvel Daredevil fucking on uh, series. The series are pretty good, especially Daredevil one and two. Jessica, uh, Jessica Jones. Jones is real good. Luke Cage is real good. Unfortunately, The Punisher was disappointing because they tried to 
they just they watered that character down. I wasn't a lot. crazy about Iron Fist either. Yeah, kind of. Eh. That was a little bland. Right. And uh, I had high hopes for fucking Punisher. Got through the first season, and I was like, Ugh. and then I got partly way through the second season. The second season was a little bit better. But the Punisher has to be fucking intimidating, and he has to be basically a bad guy. Before me, he was great in fucking uh, Daredevil. That's the Punisher, you know. Sheila Ann says Willem Dafoe pops up in The Hunger. Yeah, he was he was in like a, he was in there for literally two seconds. Like as some kind of junkie, like yeah. leaning against a phone booth. I don't know yeah. if that was like his first role, but I thought that was kind of funny. Um, yeah, somebody's saying like Guillermo del Toro. A lot of st his stuff is not set in the present day. Yeah, that's true. Now that now that you mention it, all of his yeah, because a lot of his stuff. Well, Pan's Labyrinth and uh, Devil's Backbone that was set during the Spanish Civil War. I haven't seen The Shape of Water yet. Yeah. I, mean, I keep meaning to watch it, but it's just like I haven't seen it. I know it got didn't it, it won like best picture, I think, when it came out. I still haven't got around to seeing Oracle it. Oracle says Black Adam's part of the Shazam group of characters, so it's kind of a sequel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's going to run alongside it. That's what I thought. I thought it was going right. to be two separate movies. Okay. Like that was the impression I got. I don't have Shazam on Blu-ray. I need to get that bitch on Blu-ray. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, I was going to get it, and I never got around to buying it. Yeah. I liked it. I liked that, and another one that I liked was uh, Into the Spider-Verse, the animated one. I thought that was great. That was great. That was yeah. fantastic, actually. Yeah. But, you know, well, it's, I, I thought they were making a sequel to that, too. Yeah, and I thought that one was going to be a loser, but it, the Spider-Verse, but no, I, I fucking loved it. Yeah. I wanted. I want a whole c uh, animated film of the noir Spider-Man, the black and white one from the, yeah. from the 40s. That would have been fucking great. 30s and 40s. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're doing more with that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if each one is getting their own offshoot movie or something like that, but I thought they were working on something along those lines. Some of that superhero stuff only works in fucking animation. Some of it can only be animated. It doesn't make sense in live action, some of it. Um, I was fucking real pleased with fucking both Venoms. Liked them both. I don't have either one on Blu-ray. Yeah, those, those were two. fun. I liked them both. Some stuff feels true to the superhero genre some of it doesn't and part of that mcu stuff just didn't feel true to the to comic books to me um but you know er everybody has their own opinions i know most people love the the, the yeah the, the, the MCU. which yeah and i'm not saying they're wrong i'm just yeah, saying that just my, my I, I liked them i just yeah. they weren't real i didn't really get all that they're, emotionally invested they're kind of generic they were yeah that's generic. yeah that's from my point of view they just yeah. did seem kind of very little um and you know fucking the new Superman, not that good, man. Fucking Superman 1-2, one, 1 and 2 from... And the Donner cut of fucking Superman 2. Fucking, yeah. You know, hard to beat Chris Reeves. Um, They're just... I don't know. What else was good from, from fucking superheroes? Uh, I don't really know. I'm not... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the old Spider-Mans were pretty good with, with Tobey Maguire. They were pretty good. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I said, yeah. you know, we'll maybe see the new one, but... Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's not going to be... Because, honestly, there were some other movies that I wanted to see before that. I mean, I wouldn't actually mind seeing House of Gucci. Yeah, I got to see that one looked good. That actually House looked pretty good. Yeah. That looked like a lot of campy fun. And, um, <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, I'm into it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was expecting to like this one, but I liked it way more than I was expecting. Because I kind of went into it, because like I said, I hadn't seen the book, I hadn't read the book, I hadn't seen the original. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew it was some kind of like noir-ish carny thing, but I didn't really know like what the story was going to be. So I was just kind of like, man, I'm just going to go see it like kind of sight unseen. And man, it was like really, really, all the fucking acting is good in it. It was just... Oracle said they are making a, a sequel to Spider-Verse. Yeah, I thought they yeah. were. I thought they were. Uh, Pat says, I enjoyed the Dolph Lundgren version of The Punisher, believe it or not. His acting was not good. And I don't know how it compared to the comics, but I liked it as sort of drive-in action movie. I think I've seen that, but it's been so long that I can't, like, remember. Evidently, Mango didn't like uh, House of Gucci. I can tell by just what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, I've that. seen House of Gucci. Let me know what you think of it if you see it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we, you know, we, we already have the AMC yeah. stub, so. And Pat Acid agrees with me, man. Fucking, um, uh, Chris, Chris Reeves was the shit. He was the <laughs> shit. He, that was Superman. Now, Superman 3 and 4, you know, they kind of not good. Not you know, Superman 4 was a fucking disaster. I got it. I still haven't seen it yet. Somebody sent it to me. Sent me all of them. I haven't got as far as 4. But I heard that 4 is so fucking 
out there that it that that it might it's a canon film. It's so bad it might be good. I gotta yeah, see we'll that. have to get drunk one night and watch really that. See, see Superman <laughs> 4. I remember seeing Superman 4 just on HBO when it came out, and I looked at it for like a couple seconds. And I, ah, no. You could already tell. It, it was... Yeah, and it turned it. Nope. No, so I never even got through it. Superman 4 is one of those movies where even even if you look at stills from the movie, you, you can tell that it's not good. <laughs> it's like Turkish Superman. It was like on a lot of Turk. It was like a Turkish Superman movie. Oh my god. That's what it looked like. All those Turkish ripoffs. But some people says, no, man, you gotta see it. It's fucking hilarious. But, well, I, I'll check it out when I get around to it. Yeah, we do have it. We just haven't, yeah. we just, we just haven't pulled the trigger on <laughs> it <laughs> Oh, my God. All right. So uh, you want to wrap it up? Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of sleepy, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Even though I, just, I got sleep. I don't know yeah. why. But, yeah. Uh, if Yeah, if you want to see, like, a, an actual R-rated uh, you know, adult oriented drama about carnies and shit like that, like in noir, but this is like really fucking good. Like I said, some people are complaining because it's like, oh, it's a little too long. Fuck that. Yeah. People got ADD. I know. I guess. And I, I did I did not. Yeah, it's long, but it's that did not bother me in the slightest. Let me throw some ADD in there. I want to say something before we shut it down. Another one I'm pissed off is that whatever happened to our fucking sequel of fucking Battle Angel? Alita Battle Angel was fucking great. Yeah, but how long not is that going to take him to make? Not a peep. And evidently they kept kept a bunch of expensive live action sets and shit to continue to make that. And uh, I thought that was great, man. It was much better than Ghost in the Shell. And Ghost in the Shell wasn't as bad as people said it was. It's just that I think they their hopes were real high based on the manga. The, 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 the fans didn't like it. But Battle Angel, I thought that was great, man. They were set up a good fucking... A good fucking character. I wanted to find out more about the Martian Wars and and the fucking Battle Angels and shit and fucking how they did shit. And I thought it was cool. Cyber cyborgs. I guess Mango's talking about House of Gucci, but it says it has some good performances, but it's a bit of a mess in my view. Lots of actors chewing the scenery. Oh, now I really want to watch okay. it. <laughs> right. Like I said, I kind of feel like I'm gonna go into it with. It just being like over the top and like campy, and I'm just yeah. like, I'll try to enjoy it on that level. Well, in a way, in a way, there's been some good movies like that Adam Sandler movie, fucking what he played the damn gangster was. It was all over the place. It was great. Uncut Gems. Uncut yeah. Gems is a fucking masterpiece. It was. It's great. And I'm not a huge Sandler fan. I'm not either. But if you want to see a cool fucking gangster movie about Jewish gangsters down in the fucking Diamond District, see that one. That was I told you that that yeah. movie like made me like have anxiety. Yeah, that was one of the most anxiety-inducing movies I've ever watched. Talk about fucking, <laughs> talk about grifting. That dude was grifting and scamming twenty-four-seven. You go, how the fuck did he do this with other people's money? You know, like, <laughs> and he yeah. goes, this is what I do. They just, oh man. Oscar says, Jenny, what's your exact cash app name? I think it's just Jenny Ashford. J N N Y A S H F O R D. I think you get a super chat with a space in between. I think yeah. so. It's I think it's just my actual name. What I'd have to look though. Is she is she laying on her back? Yeah, she's like, trying to get attention. Like a weirdo. Yeah. That's yeah. That's what she does. She's like. Yeah, I said that being drunk is the best way to watch Superman. That's 4. kind. Of, uh, yeah. Okay. I kind of, we'll we'll kind get of drunk and watch Superman four. <laughs> One of these days. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should watch it tonight. Do a matinee yeah. on it. We oh. we got to do uh, identity as well because yeah. Rob says that. Oracle said Chris Reeves was one of those actors who embraced, uh, who embraced not just a superhero role but the legacy, knowing that so many kids would see him as Superman. I agree. I mean, he just seemed like a good dude overall. Yeah, you know, Superman the su- the Superman character, and this is what's missing out of the new Superman. Superman himself has an intense level of, of of purity to him. He has to be very morally pure. You have to fucking suspect this dude of being a virgin. And that's fucking Superman. That is Superman. Yeah. Superman. When you when you look at a Superman, you have you're gonna be like, that's the kind of dude that actually doesn't get in the ass. Like he, <laughs> he he's afraid of hurting that woman's feelings. That guy, he's got to protect her feelings because he can't because he got to be Superman. He can't have children in her family. He's got to go. He got to save the world and shit. So he's he's got to be kind of an angelic being. They they are based upon angels. L means fucking God, you know, uh, Kal L and I'm fucking Jar L so and fucking cash, yeah, and this is all, this is all a retelling of fucking, in a way, Jesus, 
God and the Son of God. It is, it is a Jewish story. Um, it's basically about a Jewish kid sent to America to escape fucking fascism, you know, and the Nazis. So that's what my cash app is. Yeah. So it's the little dollar sign of Jenny. Oh, it's all run together. Yeah. Or try Jennifer Ashford. Right. See, I can't even remember. I don't use. I don't use this that often. <laughs> so I don't really know. But that's what it is. So Superman's got to be kind of boyish. <clears throat> he can't be dark. There's no way of. Ha you can't have a dark Superman, really. Yeah, some superheroes you can do like gritty reboots, but yeah, yeah Superman. I mean, you can dark. do it. I'm not saying you can't. Superman but... had dark moments, even in the Chris Reeves versions when he went yeah. bad for the fucking the poisoning from the goddamn fucking what do you call it the the the, the man made kryptonite. You yeah. know what I mean? And he, he. So there are times when he had dark moments, but the su but Superman has to be a, a character of moral purity, or you don't buy into it. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah, Mango says Superman 4 is bad with a capital B, but a must see. Batshit okay. crazy fun. Okay. Let's watch. So tonight, let's watch Identity and Superman 4. Okay. And then we'll do right. matinees on those. Well, because we need like two movies because tomorrow night we can't watch a movie because we're going to Memento Mori, the Christmas Memento Mori yeah. at the club. Yeah. So we won't be able to watch. So we got to watch two movies tonight. Yeah. Oscar told me not to slander Christ. I ain't slander Christ. <laughs> it's all right. Oscar, he sent you something. Oh, okay. Let me look. See this got I keep my you phone can give way me, over you there. Credit for it. Wait, where'd it go? What's happening? What's happening? I don't know. <laughs> What's happening? Mango says that's a good double double bill. Yeah. <laughs> well, those are the two that we have like yeah. to to you know watch so. Okay. All right. Did well, you get it? Thank you very much. How much was the super chat? Well, hold on. So hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not really sure because, like I said, I don't really, like, use this all that often. She doesn't really know how to use it. Yeah. Like I said, I only got it yeah. because I had one friend that was, like, using Same it. And I don't way. really know. And I don't even have a bio. It's, look, I have a wrong, a, my wrong address is on there still. I'll, okay, fi I'll figure, figure it out. Figure it I'll out. figure it out right. later. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Uh, but, yeah, so. She doesn't know how to thank do it, dude. So thank you very much, yeah. How much was it, bro? Five, I mean, you, probably five. Yeah, like, don't okay. worry about it. I ain't worry about it. <laughs> All right, so are we done? So, yeah, go go see Nightmare Alley, everybody. Okay. I mean, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah, well worth it. That's when you should see it in the, in, in the theater. I mean, I really liked it. Yeah. I, I thought it was really, really good. Um, but, yeah, it's two and a half. So it's a it, trip. Yeah, so if you think it's going to be long or if you think it's going to be slow, then then don't. Like, don't go see it, but... I mean, I, th I recommend I, it. I thought it was amazing. I thought yeah, it was like really, it. really good. I it thought just, it was it's really a certain good. kind of movie. It'll, it'll kind of pull you in. Yeah, I totally got sucked in. Like yeah. I said, it didn't seem long to me at all because right. I was just like, I was totally like fascinated by it. All right, so tomorrow we'll be back talking about either Identity or Superman 4. We're not going to tell you which one. We don't know yeah. which one. We don't we'll, know yet. We'll, we'll figure it out. But yeah, so uh, have a good rest of your weekend, everybody. Thanks for super chats and donations and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll see you guys again tomorrow afternoon.